Hi, my name is Robert. I am 12 years old, and I'm not quite an ordinary guy. Unfortunately, I wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider and don't have a super strong skeleton because vibranium is hidden inside me. It's all about the features of my appearance. As far as I can remember, I was always very pale. Even in kindergarten, I noticed that I was slightly different from my friends. My skin was white and almost transparent. It surprised and scared me at the time. And also, my lips. Almost always, they were pale pink, almost white, sometimes even blue. It seemed that I was constantly freezing, even in the summer, but that was not the point at all. Since childhood, my parents took me to doctors, trying to find the cause of my paleness. I was given various diagnoses. They conducted many examinations. They even drove me to some ultra-modern medical center to determine the exact cause of my unusual appearance. When I was very young, it was like an adventure for me. I felt special. The final diagnosis was anemia, a lack of red blood cells, that is, red blood cells in the blood. It is for this reason that from the outside, I resemble a walking corpse. But that is not all. Perhaps because of anemia or because of something else, but it turned out that my skin is very sensitive to sunlight. And when the rest of us enjoyed walking in the summer or relaxing on the beach under the sun, I had to hide under the roof because in good weather and bright sun, I could instantly get burned. Not very fun, right? Perhaps this is why my parents always chose the states and cities where our sun didn't really pamper the locals with their bright light as our place of residence. I was born in Alaska, in the city of Juneau, but due to the work of my father, he is a civil engineer, we were forced to change our place of residence several times, so we ended up in North Dakota. I also had to change school quite often. I barely had time to get used to the teachers and classmates as I had to leave again. Over time, I realized that in my case, it's better not to become attached to anything so as not to hurt when I leave. My friends were into comics about my favorite superheroes and computer games. Parents understood everything and did not swear at me that I spent all day in my room and did not go out, especially since I studied well. Of course, my appearance has always raised questions from others, especially with my peers. Some were whispering behind me, others without hiding were staring at me, and still others were directly asking if I was ill or something. Sometimes I liked to make fun of it and said that yes, I was sick and it was deadly and contagious. You should have seen how they almost jumped away from me. Adults usually looked sympathetically and understandingly. But my new school and local students surprised me like no one before. By 12, I had become a rather reserved and unsociable guy. I had nothing to talk about with guys and girls of my age. I did not plan to make friends. That is why when the teacher introduced me to my new classmates, I did not even smile. I went into the classroom, took the last desk in the last row near the window. I didn't look at anyone. No one said hello to anyone. At the break, I turned on my favorite music in my headphones and played a game on my phone. Of course, after such behavior, no one thought to approach me. That is exactly what I achieved. However, I was too happy too early, because with my behavior, I not only provoked a negative reaction, but also interest, moreover to a greater extent in girls. Once I lingered in the dining room and heard a conversation. The girls were talking, but not from my class. They discussed a strange guy appeared at school. Who does not talk to anyone, does not try to make friends. He walks all the time, sitting on the sidelines. He also has a very unusual appearance. He is pale and always gloomy. The description was very similar to me. I already thought that they were just gossiping, but their next words shocked me. They assumed that by all the described signs, 
it can be concluded that I am a vampire. I wanted to laugh out loud, but I realized that they would hear. Indeed, judging by their conversation, they definitely did not notice me. Can anyone really seriously believe that vampires exist these days? These girls have definitely revised science fiction films or read too much anime. In any case, I did not continue to listen to this nonsense and return to class. Once again, I was mistaken into thinking that only a couple of girls supported this crazy idea about a vampire. Soon, in my class, I began to hear similar conversations. A couple of times, I pretended to turn on the music, but actually listened to what was happening around. One of the girls brought an article from the magazine, How to Determine If There Are Vampires Around You. They enthusiastically read the questionnaire questions out loud and agreed with each statement. I could hardly resist rolling my eyes and telling them that they had too rich of an imagination. Conversations at school did not subside. I decided not to argue, being sure that they would soon lose interest in me. So it has been more than once, and not two. At first, in each school, I attracted a lot of attention, and after that, life returned to its usual course. One day, a biology teacher decided to take us on an excursion to the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. As luck would have it, that day the sun came out, spring warming. While my classmates cheerfully parted with their jackets, I pulled my arms lower and hid behind a cap. Of course, after that trip, talk that this strange Robert is also afraid of the sun like a vampire captured almost our entire school. I decided that it would be fun to participate in this game. Therefore, at lunch, I began to bring pomegranate juice or tomato puree to school. You should have seen the eyes of my classmates when I calmly took out a transparent bottle in which something resembling human blood splashed. I even specially ominously smiled and licked my lips. Going to school was definitely fun. I told all my parents about everything but they only laughed with me, and the next day, they shared that they also gossip about the vampire boy where they work. When the Halloween party was announced, I had no doubt what costume I should choose. It was so obvious that my parents were not surprised at all when I asked them to buy this particular outfit. Together, we chose everything I need to impress. A high collar, a black cloak with a blood red lining, a tuxedo, false fangs and red lenses. The image of the vampire, or Count Vlad Dracula, has traditionally been one of the most popular at Halloween parties, but the whole school seemed to freeze as I entered the mystically decorated sports hall. Of course, given the shade of my skin and pale lips, the whole image looked as natural as possible in my performance. I felt that all eyes were riveted to me. At some point, even the thought flickered that it would be great to grab the first girl standing next to her and dig into her neck with my fangs. That would be a show. However, the party was pretty boring. I did not plan to dance, just studied the costumes of other guys. Some of them obviously took a lot of money to win the king and queen of the party contest. Who was not there? The mummy? Iron Man, Hulk, Groot, Captain America, Minions, Chucky Dolls, Ghosts, Zombies. Among such a set of costumes, I did not expect at all that it was my costume that was recognized as the best. I was very embarrassed when they called me to the stage to hand me the crown. The queen of the party was a girl in an Annabelle doll costume. Of course, according to the law of the party, we had to dance a slow dance at the end of the party as the king and queen. We did not break traditions and took our place in the center of the hall. I did not think that the girl would want to talk, but she quickly began to ask me something. I answered in monosyllables, hoping that the conversation would quickly end. And suddenly, among ordinary ones, a question like, where did you come from and what do you do in your free time? She asked me to bite her in all seriousness. She said that she and many other girls at school knew that I was a vampire, 
and that they had even argued among themselves because each of them wanted to come to me and offer me to drink their blood. I was shocked. In the end, she added that in fact, they even have a small fan club named after me. They are all in love with the mysterious vampire and dream that I bit them. And then, I realized that my game was delayed. I apologized to her, interrupted our dance, and went home. At that moment, I had to seriously think about what to do in this situation. It was no longer funny. Once again, I made a mistake, assuming that my refusal would calm her. She literally began to chase me. I noticed her at the entrance of the school, in the cafeteria, on the football field. When she sat next to me in the school bus, I almost asked the bus driver to stop and urgently let me out. It all looked like some kind of bad movie. But the main surprise was waiting for me ahead. Once before class, I looked into my locker to get a textbook and saw there a small object that looked like a vial. These usually store drugs or injections, but in this bubble, judging by the color and density, there was no medicine at all, but human blood. And next to it was a note in which my persevering pursuer suggested that I try her to taste, and after that already personally bite her, because she dreams of becoming a vampire. With trembling hands, I removed the vial with blood away, trying not to even think how she was able to collect so much of her own blood. After this incident, I realized that it was time to end with my rally. But I didn't even invent it. Yes, and how to do it now? Put an ad on the blackboard. Hi, I'm Robert, and I'm not a vampire. Somehow stupid, agree? Maybe you will advise me what I should do in this situation. It cannot go on like this anymore, that's for sure. But I would not want to seem like an idiot in front of the whole school. I will be grateful for your advice in the comments. Also, tell me if you liked my story, and share some topics that you would be interested in hearing about in future videos. See ya!